Hey, Summerside Church family, and welcome to the second session of our Family Worship Workshop. Last week, we talked about how important family worship is, especially during this time um, at home, and that family worship is simply taking the time to read the Bible, pray, and sing to God together. This week, we're going to break down those three elements of family worship, which is read, pray, and sing. You should know that a lot of what I'm going to talk about comes from this book, Family Worship by Donald Whitney, and uh, we have these books available at the church at cost, and I'll tell you how to get those at the end here. So why these three? What is so special about read, pray, and sing? Why not more? Why not less in family worship? There are a lot of things you could do that are valuable for you to do in leading your family spiritually, but these three practices are both commanded in the Bible for public worship and work really well in a family setting. Let's take a look at some, at some passages. 1 Timothy 4.13 Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Not everyone is called to preach or even to teach, but we can at least read the Bible out loud with our families and teach them that way. 2 Timothy 3.16, just a little further down. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Since God is calling you as a parent to teach and train your kids, reading the Bible is going to need to come into play. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Praying and giving thanks to God is not just for meals and bedtime. Without ceasing and in all circumstances would imply that it should be a part of our family worship time as well. Now let's look at Ephesians 5.19. Addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. If you're going to raise your kids to obey this commandment, you're going to have to practice singing at home. The formula of read, pray, sing is simple enough and complete enough to make family worship as accessible for every family in every context. According to the earliest records, Christians would follow a simple read, pray, sing outline for worship. Late 17th century Bible commentator Matthew Henry had this to say about family worship. They that pray in the family do well. They that pray and read the scriptures do better. But they that pray and read and sing do best of all. This is how we can engage our family and ourselves in worshiping God with our ears and our minds as we hear and read God's word, with our spirit and emotions as we pray to God, and with our voices and our hearts as we sing to God. Think about what most people do during Christmas time. They read the Christmas story and they sing carols. This is the tradition in a lot of families. All family worship is, is keeping this tradition all year long, every day. Don't you wanna have Christmas every day in your house? It's something we always talk about doing uh, every year and uh, keeping the spirit of Christmas all year round. And this is how we do that. We read, we pray, and we sing. Let's look at each of these family worship practices. First, reading the Bible. Family worship starts with gathering around an open Bible and reading it out loud. Ideally, you read through a book of the Bible at a time, chapter by chapter. You may want to pick different books of the Bible depending on the age of your kids. And uh, you could use a Bible storybook, and that, that really works well. But I want to be clear that we want to teach what that our kids, that the Bible is God's word and that it's, it's actually special. And uh, so I would encourage you to move in the direction of reading from the Bible itself, maybe uh, an appropriate translation for the age of your kids. Um, but at home, we use a storybook and that really works well getting the kids engaged. So use whatever is gonna work best in your context, but don't forget about the power that comes from reading God's word. Depending on your context and how engage your family is, it could be reading a whole chapter or it could be a few verses at a time. Start small and go from there. As you're reading or when you are done reading, make sure to do some basic explanation of difficult to understand words. Look things up together if you don't understand 
You don't need to do a full sermon or even a, a devotional on the passage. Simply explain what words mean so they know what was read. Do as much as you can. The goal is to make this a habit for your family, not that it is done super well. And that's really important to remember. After you've read scripture, it's time to pray. There's so many ways you can do prayer as a family. It could be as simple and complex and creative as you want it to be. Doesn't matter what it looks like, just do it. You can pray the Lord's Prayer if this is new to you. You can pray through a psalm, but if it's just you saying a prayer, saying a quick prayer, um, that really works well. The most effective thing you can do is really pray through the Bible passages that you just read. Try to apply something that you've just read. For example, if you read um, Luke 4, Jesus being tempted um, in the wilderness, you can pray to keep you all from temptation and thank Jesus for giving you victory over sin and Satan in his name. This is a great way um, to pray for your family while at the same time teaching them to pray as well. You know, I thought kids intuitively knew that uh, prayer was a serious thing, that they were supposed to like be quiet and pay attention, but it's actually something that they have to be taught. Surprise, surprise. And uh, so I encourage you to be patient with them and uh, work through this. So after you pray, here comes the fun part. Sing. This is going to look different depending on your ability and comfortability with singing. Remember, God commands everyone to sing and has made you with the ability to sing. Even if you don't even have a voice, you can sing in your heart. But everyone should sing the best that they can. Pick a song. Any song. It doesn't matter. Um, don't make it complicated. Could do the same song for a week before switching it up. Put on a YouTube video and sing along or sing a cappella. Do whatever you got to do, but just sing a song, any worship song. Check out Summerside's Spotify playlist for a list of our songs we do on Sundays. Kids love actions. I remember we did a little devotional talking about how God had created our eyes um, and how he can open our eyes. And we started to sing, um, open the eyes of my heart. And, uh, you know, my young two-year-old daughter started to do the actions with us. She was really excited. And uh, my other kids are kind of like, what's going on? What are we doing? Because this is new to us as well. But uh, that's just a really great way to engage kids. So if you can pick a song that has actions, that's a win. And there you have it. All you need to do for family worship is read, pray, and sing. There's virtually zero prep work with this. Pick a passage and pick a song. Done. You can always do more than that, but that's all you need to do to get started. So this is my challenge for you this week. Starting this Sunday, lead your family in worship through Holy Week, the week leading up to Easter. We have you covered on Palm Sunday, on Good Friday, and on Easter Sunday with services. So I'm giving you the responsibility to take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Let's leave Saturday as a freebie. Uh, make a plan right now with your spouse. There are a lot of resources you can use. Bible app has reading plans. You can do a quick Google search on that and uh, just read even if it's just one Bible passage every day. Pray and sing a song for the week. Make this fun for your family. It's something different. Easter is, is coming. Just like we have Advent chocolates leading up to Christmas, bribe your kids with chocolate each day and read to them as they munch on it. I don't know, be creative. Use the formula of read, pray, sing to make this next week special for you and your family. I hope you've been enjoying these family worship workshops and uh, you, we have two sessions left. And next week we're going to talk about how, when, where, and why to do family worship every day. If you want to learn more and discuss this further, join our family worship cohort in the link in the description. And that's where you can also purchase this family worship book at cost. See you next time.